Hello guys, so we're gonna go through four different sections right now. Um, I'm gonna have them always at this side of the board so you guys don't get lost. We're gonna talk about the Schultz diagram, and then we're gonna talk about effective shear at the bottom of a channel. Then we're gonna go into the bed load, um, and then to the suspended load. This is just to our um, sediment transport. Um, Section. So first about the Shields diagram, here is where it all starts. This is the uh, diagram that was drawn by Mr. Shields in 1936 and he uh, made a lot of uh, experiments and came up with uh, this dimensionless coefficient called the Shields parameter. Uh, he plotted uh, the value of the Shields parameter that uh, depicted the threshold of movement. So he calculated the Reynolds number for the situation present and calculated at what Schultz parameter it would be movement. So um, let's look at the Schultz parameter. This is the friction velocity squared as we know and this is um, the specific wave, gravity and the diameter of a particle. So um, as we see, most of the critical shields range is around the 0.1 area. Um, around 0.2 here at the start, with the Reynolds number of 1, it advances and it stabilizes around 0 0.06 for large numbers. Um, there is a consensus that it stabilizes here after a Reynolds number of 70. Nonetheless, this graph is very implicit because it has the friction velocity both in the abscissa and in the ordinate, and it's a quantity that is very hard to calculate. So researchers came up with a uh, modified Shields diagram. We will see now here, Matson in 1976 came up with a uh, modified abscissa parameter called the sediment fluid parameter. It's just a function of the diameter of the particle, um, the specific weight, and basically that's it. There's um, nothing new. Um, and he replotted the experimental values, and we got this um, better uh, relationship. So for a given diameter uh, of a particle, we usually use D50 in our pocket, and for a given specific weight, we can know um, whether or not the sediment is moving by calculating the Shields parameter, which we said is friction velocity squared that is by this quantity. So, if for our scenario we have, let's say, a sediment with parameter of 100, and then we boom, calculate the Shields parameter, and we fall here, there is definitely sediment transport occurring. If we fall down here, there is most likely no sediment transport uh, occurring. So this is basically the first step to know if there is sediment transport. That's all for this.